Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about archiving and saving prices according to jobs at stages. Organization is so important in a, in a business and I'm going to show you how I do it and show you how to do it using Plus Design Build to ensure that you have a backup to know what your price 12 months ago, what the updates and prices would be today and also if you ever come into legal issues or, or clients complaining about price rises or contractual information, this is really good for you to run your business. So let's have a quick look. Okay, so all I have here is the demo model, guys. You've probably seen it. If not, you can simply go up to help and support, click on there and go get a demo model. So in this instance, I'm actually going to use this as if I've just designed this for the client and here's a new job that, you know, I've already put a preliminary agreement in place. I've charged them for this. I've got it to the stage and I need to back up my prices because I'm actually creating a point in time. So first thing I'm going to do is save my model at the quote stage. So file, save, right? And it would have saved to a location if it's a new job. So it would be save as. And you can see that I actually have it in my active jobs uh, under uh, an example job, which is what I'm showing you now. And I've got it saved under CAD files and estimating. Basically, I've saved it in a location under a job address. And I've given it a date because this is my uh, for quote job. Right. I'm going to go cancel because it's already saved. And then the next thing I do is I go to my takeoff. And you'll notice at the top of the takeoff when it opens that it actually has four or five little tabs there that we would use to that we would use to export. Right. Sorry guys, I, I opened another screen. So cost codes, I would then go export my cost codes. Only time I would export my cost codes is when I had an, either an update in zero which we synchronized with, or if I had an update in cost codes, I added a new cost code in. I would save that. I'd probably do that maybe once every six months, unless it's something that happens instantly. I'd export my cost codes. I would save them to the location. So I'm going to go to my job file here. And in my job file, instead of, these are all of my jobs, so archive jobs, which are old jobs. I've got a new template, so when I create a new job, I just copy that template and give it a job address. I've got cost codes, so I can save them there, and you can see that I can actually save these under a date. So if I went save cost codes, if I just wanted to override the last ones, I would leave it at that, or I would type in the date in front of it. So therefore be 2022, uh, May 24th. All right, save, okay. You can do that for all of these. It's gonna try and open those files for you automatically. All right, so same with the vendors, but pricing is so important. If I go and export my pricing, there's two ways to export pricing. One is for materials, for instance, cladding and timber and concrete. The other is for components like doors and windows and so on. So I go export pricing and I'd actually leave it at all because it's going to be a backup and go okay. Now, I'm going to save it in my, uh, my folder and this is up to you guys, my pricing file backups, right? And I'm actually going to save it as materials because this is material export. And you can see that I have an archive of the dates that I've actually created uh, pricing file backups. The reason I don't save the pricing file in the actual job address is because my pricing file usually goes across multiple jobs. Right? And you can see that I've actually got today's date there. I'm not going to export it, but I put in the date as I go. And therefore, no matter what job I quote, I can go back to an archive date and time and then I can simply go import material pricing CSV. So I can import to a date and then if I go, okay, I've gone back and I've had a look at my archive, I can then go and import today's pricing back in there. I hope that makes sense. If you've got any questions, ask them below. I can also do the same for exporting components. So project file uh, and I'm going to go to pricing file backups and I'm going to go to components and I'm going to go save. Right. I can open that up if I wanted to straight away. I think you get the idea. The thing is, is that I have a job that's been saved at a date that actually has a price and cost codes and everything that's associated at that date in time that I can go on back up to if I need to. The reason why we do want to do the backup is because as prices rise, the more jobs we do, we can get a quote instantly out of the software. However, there's one more important button here. All of these buttons here will be able to export things for you. The first one is export your client estimate. So on the top right hand side, client estimate, click that and then go to my pricing file or back to my main job 
my active jobs, example job, and then estimating, right? You can see that I can add in here. Now, I like to have my, my, my date that I do this at the front of the file because it makes it easy to see, as I said before. And then I might go first quote, right? Poorly spelt, you get the idea, save. Okay, I have my first quote. Now the benefit of my first quote is that when I open it up, it has time stamped everything for me, right? So I've got my date up here. I also have everything that I've allowed for in the job. The price that I allowed for and everything that's in there, it is such a good way to keep a record of where you're at with your quote. Also, to, if you're in the job and you've built the job and the client's agreed to this quote, it's a good way to go in and add in line items for things you might not have, you might have missed. So you can actually go back and either charge as variations or you can update your estimating in Plus Design Build. Now guys, there's one other really important thing to do and I'm going to go back there and I'm going to show you is what about your purchase orders for your subcontractor? Because just as the client wants to keep you to the price you've given them, you also want to keep your subcontractors to the price uh, that, that you've agreed upon. So let's go back and have a look. Okay, so I'm just going to get out of that and go back to my model. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. Generating reports. You can see that I've got Watts Carpentry and all of my subcontractors that I've associated inside of the uh, estimate in Plus Design Build. However, I've also got suppliers as well. Now, if I click this and go, what's carpentry? Choose the, what I, I've created the purchase order for or what I'm paying him for and go generate. Because I've already generated this purchase order, it says, would you like to update it or override it or just open the saved existing? I'm gonna go open. Now, if you've done this from scratch, you would be creating your purchase orders as you go and you should be clicking save report. Once you're happy with what the subcontractor is going to do and the price you're going to pay, you would save that report, right? Or you would send it to zero. So the point is, is that if you're sending it to zero, you are archiving what you're sending to zero to start. However, I don't do it that way. I actually save them myself. So I've gone through and I've gone through all of my subcontractors and I've done that. Now you'll notice at the top is the button called save reports. And I have the ability to export all of my reports or send all of my reports to zero. The benefit of, of this is, is that it'll actually go through and save all of those reports into my job. So there I've got active job, right? Choose the job address, estimating, save, right? These are all my, my, um, purchase orders I'm giving to my client, right? So to my subcontractors, sorry guys, right? So purchase orders. Now I have what I agreed, the rate to the subcontractor saved as an archive, save. Okay. All right, it's gone back and tried to open that file for me. So that's kind of handy. All right, so in summary guys, if you've, you're doing jobs as you go and you might not win them for 12 months down the track, it's so important to save them. When you add a new price or update your price in Plus Design Build, it's going to update in retrospect because you may have done it, you created a job 12 months ago but not actually given it a price. It's so important that we have current prices when we send out for estimate to clients. However, archiving prices so that we can actually either charge a variation to the job is paramount to us staying profitable. Uh, also utilizing the archives for potential legal issues if a client or the bank says, no, we're not gonna pay that. You can go back to your contract. Well, here's the price I was paying back then and here's the price I'm paying now. Guys, save the model as revision one estimate. Save your pricing every time you get an update and have a job folder set up. I'm just gonna quickly run you through my job folder setup, guys, just so you can see how I do it and it maybe explain a little bit more. Right, so in my documents, I have active jobs. Let's see if I can get that a little bit bigger for you. I have active jobs, I have a new template. So for instance, I'm gonna start a new job, I would use a new template. I save my cost codes, my price files, my vendors and subs. 
I also have an archive folder because sometimes you accumulate junk. I have authority conditions, which would might be the local council has a certain development control plan. I would save them in here. I also have materials, materials that I would use to import. So I might be browsing the internet and go, that looks like a good product. I want to put in Blastbeck. If I open it up, you can see that I've got bricks, concrete, cladding, flooring, and all of those type of things. If I click on there, I've got images inside of there that I can use. Active jobs are the jobs that I have in construction. The example job that I just did there now has my model save in file inside of it. And I can have existing plans, design work, drafting, all the things that I would do. When I want to start a new job, as I said, I would go back and I would use my template file, copy, paste, rename it as a new job. And then that way I stay organized. Anyone who works in my office can find the information I require. Uh, anyone who works for me can essentially know where information is, but more importantly, I know where information is. So guys, folder structure, back up your prices as you go, and it'll help you out a lot. If you've got any questions, ask them both. If you like the video, push like. If you dislike the video, push dislike. All right, guys, cheers.